Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft Excel database functions. In cell H1, I have a dsum function, and then below that, dmin, dcount, and dAverage. These four functions are database functions, along with the dget function, which is over on this side, which I'll go through shortly. But basically how it works is this. You have to have a database, which I've got there, and if I highlight this data, you can see that I've named this range database. You have to have a criteria, so um, the criteria area for this is called selection. If I highlight this area, you can see that it's called selection. And then the field that you want to look at, in this case F1, is the word salary. If I come down further, you can see I've actually put a number six there because that is the sixth column. And at the very bottom, the option, you could also type it with quotes like here. Whichever option you use, it's up to you, but it's probably tidier to use this top option with a cell reference. As long as these two are exactly the same and there are not spaces, for example, after the text, it should work fine. So this is how it works. If I just repeat these below, I'll do the dsum first, equals dsum, open the bracket. The database I've called database. The field is salary. I'm going to click on F1. And the criteria is this selection area. Click the tick. Format that to bounds. Same same answer. Now how it works is this. So instead of every single person, let's say I only want to see grade EO. And now things change. So now the sum for the grade selected there is shown as £180,334. All of these other ones have also changed. Um, the minimum salary is still the same, but the the count of EO is 6, and the average is 30,000. We change that to a different grade, AO. That's now changed again. There's 5. And you can use the rest of this criteria area to add additional features. So now we are looking at male, grade AO. And let's try this that are greater than 30. So according to my count, my D count, there are two. The total is 35, the average is 17, the minimum is still 12. And then if I clear this off, you're back to the total. That's a D sum. So if I do that again for the D min, D min, open the bracket, the database is called database. The field is still going to be the salary field, F1. And then the criteria is going to be this selection area at the top. And then if I take that, that should be a duplicate, as you can see from above. And the process is the same for the count, D count, and D average. Now on the right here, I have got a D get function. So I'm selecting from a drop-down list different ID numbers, which are these numbers. This is a data validation list. And whichever number I pick, so it's a unique, unique identifier, it's returning the section, the name, gender, grade, and salary. Now, this dget function is slightly better than a vlookup because a vlookup would have to have the unique identifier in the first column. This is more like, um, I could have this anywhere, and as long as the criteria is set, it will work. So if you look at the function, it says dget, that's the function name, dget, database is still this database. And then it's looking at L5, L5 is the, the word name, which is the same as the column on the database. And then it's looking at the selection area, selection one is these two. 
So that's where it's getting its information from. That is why when I change this, all of these change as they would with a VLOOKUP, but so does this one. So this is where it would change. To achieve this without a DGET function, you'd have to use INDEX and MATCH, which would work, but VLOOKUP would not work. You'd have to move the column, the ID column, from this second position to the first position, and then it would work. But let's just recreate this underneath. So first of all, if I highlight the title, just copy that down with the control key. And if I just copy the list, copy, paste, so I've got my drop down list, the same as before. And then we'll do the dget function. And before I do that, I'm just going to name these two. Um, I'll just call it test for this example. So if I start by typing equals d get, open the bracket. The database is called database. The criteria is going to be name. And so the field is going to be name and the criteria is going to be test. And then I can pull that across, format the last one to be salary, and then just copy and paste it for the section. So change the ID, the name and details all change. Now the reason that has worked is because the only dynamic part of this is the label, L8 in this case, and that moves on to M8. The fact that I've used names means that these are fixed and the database is also fixed. If I do that again in example two, so I've got a small table called sales and again I've called these two cells region and I have a data validation list there where I can select an individual city and then the sales and the company comes back for that selection. So Canada, there's a sales for Canada. Same figure. So if I do that again underneath, again the key, the key to this working is to copy exactly the labels, make sure there's no spaces after them. So sometimes when people type, I found out that touch, touch typists tend to do this, they do a little space at the end of words, that's going to throw this off. So you must make sure that the uh, the labels are exactly the same. So I'll copy my data validation down again, and then I'll type equals d get, open the bracket. The database is called sales in this one. The field is going to be the sales g4, and the criteria is going to be these two cells, which I've not named. And then close the bracket, and it gives you the answer. Now, because I haven't named those, I would have to use dollar size to fix that if I was going to copy and paste it there. So I, I'm just going to name this test one so I can use a name for this area. And then I can copy that, paste it there, and it gives me the company. So I select the country and it gives me the company and the sales. So in this case, it's just returning this information. So that's a quick look at database functions. Database functions have been around a long time. Sometimes people go down the count if and sum if and count ifs um, option, but these are quite easy to use, especially the first few that I did with this criteria at the top, very quick and sometimes not as big as what count ifs and sum ifs can be. It's something to have a look at and a think of. And thank you for your time for this little video.